What is up, down and sideways, all of you beautiful individuals? We have returned. It's Sleek Unlock. My name is Eric, and we are just here to get you geared up, pumped up, hyped up, excited overall for the mid-season invitational 2024 edition. So little bit of lead up only a few days away we're going back looking at five of the best individual games in the history of MSI going on almost a decade now of this event and obviously when you're looking at best games things were taken into account back and forth you don't want to be having a blowout if it's a best game entertainment factor whether that's chaos sick out plays and then just overall level of play if if it's a fiesta sure it's an exciting game but sometimes not the highest quality gameplay so full gameplay quality individual plays extreme back and forth and just highlight real moments that's what we got in all these games first shouting out an honorable mention to a game from the very first installment of msi 2015 group stage fanatic versus skt obviously these are very different looking squads faker the only guy still remaining on any of these but it was fanatic when the west had no chance against the east usually on these international events got out to a great early lead they're getting barons they're steal or they're stealing barons they're getting aces on skt things are looking gravy from start to finish everyone's playing well uh on skt this is that Hooney and febivin when he was dominating later on he would get some solo kills on faker on the zed but he has an incredible cassiopeia game in this one and the reason this one's not actually on the top five or higher at the very least you have a bug that's potentially game-breakingly influencing the game this is 2015 riot still sorting things out but the rain over Sejuani bug where he hops over the wall and it's not an observer bug. He gets pulled back over, eventually leads to two Fnatic members getting caught, which basically gets SKT back in the game, gets them a Baron, uh, and then they get back in control. And this ends with one of the best highlights in the history of MSI. It's the Bang Pentakill on Lucian, where... Again, it's Fevabin having such an insane Cassiopeia ult that's a highlight in its own right. But Bang is quick enough to QSS it and eventually gets a pen to close out the game. But this one was incredibly back and forth. Some really standout performances from Fnatic as this would eventually be the squad that makes semifinals goes top four at Worlds. Um, but really showcasing that they could go toe to toe with SKT. Highlighted later in the tourney when they do force a game five semifinal against them. But the bug plus bang being too damn good on Lucian means just outside of the top five. And I hope you get used to seeing SKT because they're on this list a lot. Like number five on this list. It's another EU squad. Not a game five, but game four semifinals. SKT versus G2. Obviously, if you were doing best series overall in the history of msi this version of skt and g2 probably near the very top of that list but we're specifically focusing in on game four this is the one that's match point for skt it's do or die for g2 the eu squad gets out to a solid start and then you have one of the great plays out of faker where he steals the nar ulti on silas yoinks everybody back and basically slows down the bleeding for SKT before they can slowly get back into this game but it was still G2 in control for a lot of this they eventually get a Baron and they get two inhibs down which is when their game plan and win condition becomes very clear it's Wonder and Caps trying to backdoor which they do once and SKT successfully defends it then they get a Baron and that's where the back and forth begins for this one but it's g2 just kind of being creative eventually to try and get back into this but there's some this is the meta or the era where 80 carries had tp and teddy has not one really two but one really egregious teleport uh, in this match and eventually kind of comes to bite him back when he doesn't have it available towards the end of this one but g2 basically just end up forcing skt into an uncomfortable situation they have to make a 
bad decision, basically, which you don't see teams force SKT into something like that very often. But that's exactly what G2 does uh, in this matchup. And Wonder and Caps, they tried the back door again. This time it's successful, but it is it is so close to not working out. You even have Wonder getting Skarner ultied into the fountain, the Nexus laser, but he's able to flash out. He basically only has two or three autos left in his health bar before he takes down the Nexus. And truthfully, if Wonder is unable to take down uh, the Nexus there, G2 is probably losing this game because the momentum was 100% shifted in the favor of SKT. If they take them down, they get even more gold on the map to get back into that game. The confidence comes, and you're probably talking about SKT winning this game and then winning the series. We don't even get a game five, and obviously completely changes the landscape, not just of this midseason invitational, but also... Uh, this G2 roster as a whole for 2019. Who knows what the confidence level going forward is if they don't come away with an MSI title. And who knows what happens if Team Liquid's matching up against SKT in those finals. Maybe they last five minutes longer in a 3-0 sweep instead of setting international history for fastest best of loss. But who knows? Either way, this uh, another reason this one's on the map or on this list and criteria I forgot to mention is stakes you're talking about do or die elimination in a best of five setting that G2 comes away with this clutch backdoor so entire tournament lives on the line and they come away with a play like this um, absolutely fantastic this one had it all and was kind of the beginning of well, not the beginning because SKT G2 did play in 2017 MSI but kind of the reigniting of this SKT G2 rivalry that would eventually come to fruition later on at the World Championship. But this Game 4 in particular, even more crazy than Game 5 because that's when all the wild picks are coming out uh, of G2 to take things over. But this was the most exciting back and forth, come from behind series that we did get in a string of incredible series throughout this MSI run for both G2 and SKT. We heard you like Faker and SKT, and we're just seeing how many times we can say SKT or T1 because number four on this list is the best MSI rivalry that we have ever had. And it started in 2016, the early days before they had matched up countless times, only a couple times at the World Championship RNG versus SKT we're in the group stage and to paint the picture this is the RNG era that has it's not Uzi in the lineup it was that one uh rare year where you had whoosh starting uh with Mata again before Uzi eventually came back in the summer split but and then this is Faker I mean it's always Faker but this is the SKT with Blank in the jungle when Blank was actually hyped up and everyone was very excited about seeing this guy on the rift. And um, it's, uh, I mean, this this is when RNG was actually better in the group stage. SKT was struggling a little bit, but really it's RNG getting out to an incredibly early lead because of Mata's Bard, who had some incredible not only ulties, but flash cues, cosmic bindings to get things caught out. This is the extension yet again. How many times in the 2015 to 2016 era did we see SKT drafting comps fully around Bang on Lucian? Faker on the Lulu in this one to help pilot him to get ahead. And despite RNG winning team fight after team fight, there were still avenues where SKT stayed in the game. They eventually sneak a Baron to kind of get a Baron power play back in their control, but still down 7K in a lot of these team fights. And somehow, miraculously, it's SKT coming away with the win. Then they go right down, push it to the mid lane to try and close things out. Look at the weird turrets in 2016. This is when they were shooting laser beams, not just full balls of energy, but extended laser beams. But they take one down. Mata again saves the turret on the bard, and SKT is unable to close it out. But this is the most important part of this game, is how Duke and Faker are able to escape here. Because if you watch the top lane, 
Looper is getting ready to close things out, basically, and go into that top lane, but Faker has the cheeky trinket turnaround recalls by the Wolves just as Looper is TPing. If Mata interrupts the in recall here or they kill Faker, there's probably not going to be a base defense, and RNG might just straight up close out the game. But SKT stays alive. They live to fight another team fight, and check out the graves here. I know this is Illusion comp, but this is what Blank was actually doing in 2016 before he's getting memed in 2017. Hard carries this team fight on the graves to take things over and finally, I mean he survives with like 50 HP for most of this, but finally SKT able to come away with it. We're looking north of 50 minutes on this one and they're still at about a 3k gold deficit even after taking down the nexus and really truthfully probably had no business actually winning that game but uh one of probably the best game of that tournament even better than any of the best of series that we got later on at the event from rng and skt but so many back and forth in same team fights great plays from mata bang positioning on dilution and then faker and duke with the sneaky cheeky little secret agent recall to kind of save the game. SKT and RNG, listen, these matchups almost always deliver on the Rift, going back to even, maybe not 2013 in the finals, but going back at least to 2016 MSI. There's a reason. This is one of the best rivalries that we have internationally or domestically at all. Just League of Legends esports history. Unfortunately for RNG, that wasn't the only big lead that they threw in that group stage, even though they ended up finishing first. The biggest, most egregious of them came against North America's own Counter Logic Gaming. That's right, there was an era where it wasn't NRG for all you new fans. And this is maybe the best casted game of all time, just because of the emotion that Kobe has, obviously with the organization that he is oh so familiar with. But this is... Afro and Stixay's coming out party on the international stage down 17,000 gold against Zhao Hu and company who's just stealing kills on the Zed. But it begins with this miracle base defense where Stixay goes untouched on the Callista. It's basically just to survive. Nobody at this point was thinking CLG is actually going to come back into this game and come away with the win. It was just, okay, great. You denied or delayed the inevitable. It's Nick Smithy, though, coming in to deny the fifth dragon of RNG with that Kindred ulti. That's when this was still a new kind of impressive mechanic to be securing neutral objectives uh, with that ulti out of Kindred. He ends up getting four kills, and then all of a sudden, you believe in the comeback because that nets a Baron for CLG, and pretty soon afterwards, they're knocking on the inhib door. Looper comes to try and flank, isn't able to blow up Stixa, who is perfectly covered by Aframu, who also plays this team fight super well. Despite it, you can call it a throw from RNG, but CLG plays these comeback team fights to near perfection as it ends up being the triple kill. Like Smithy closes, uh, chases down Looper to close this one out, but at the end of this, who he still has tier one boots. There's the famous line from Kobe that he's just got brown paper bags on his feet, which he absolutely did. He was still not super useful on the Azir, he wasn't fed by any means. But again, still, what is this, a 5K deficit for CLG when they come back to actually win this game north of 40 minutes? A relatively quick turnaround for how unbelievably massive their gold deficit was. Obviously, the boys from NA were completely fired up, would eventually go all the way to the finals uh, before they fall in, you know, pretty convincing fashion at the hands of SKT. But doesn't matter because they had that incredible comeback against RNG and oh, like not enough praise to that Smithy play because again it almost is expected to make a play like that now eight plus years later but at that point I feel like people didn't even know that that interaction worked with Kindred Ulti or were expecting it to take place so 
Big shout out to X50 for that one. Stix8 for performing so damn well throughout that entire event and CLG as a whole for rewarding the faithful with one of the most exciting games in the history of the LCS on the international stage. Number two on the list is maybe the best team fighting example from a squad across an entire game, not just in MSI history, any game ever. We're going to 2023, fresh in your memory, JDG versus BLG. And this is in the upper bracket, not the grand final. Game three action, lots of coveted, iconic picks. Knight on the Syndra and the real story early on was Ruler on the Zeri in 2023 when he was one of, if not the best player on the planet. He starts this game 9-0 and zero on Ziri, already up 2-0 in the series. You expect this game's going to be done and dusted real quick, but we forgot to account for Giga Bin on the Jacks. Jun steals a Baron, and then BLG ends up getting four kills, including that massive 1K shutdown on Ruler. Despite getting East twice at this point, BLG still in the game, but then we have the iconic... Kanavi caught out on Sejuani. It's a 4v5 scenario. Ruler and Knight just play this fight absolutely masterfully. Knight blocks pretty much everything with that shock or with that stopwatch. And then the stuns he's landing interrupts Bin. Has a three man stun earlier. BLG's scared to even start up this Baron with a full health ruler and Knight land in all these different abilities. Bin finally goes in, but again, he's unable to even find a stun. He's getting knocked back again. Frontline in there for Mr. 369 on the Cassante, but this is some of the best team fighting that any team will ever do on the Rift. It's more stuns from Knight, and then finally, as the team fight's closing out, Ruler knows he can finally go forward, and of course, sidesteps a hook just for good measure, and Knight gets one more stun just for good measure. No other team in the world is winning that team fight in a 4v5 scenario other than JDG. This game, BLG looked out so many times, even though they get swept, you know that these two were so far ahead of the rest of the competition at that year's MSI event. And even after losing that 4v5, they hold on. BLG holds on miraculously again. It's been surviving on the jacks. And you thought after that 4v5, they'd be depleted. Not at all. Then it's one final Baron, which again, Jun is even able to steal his second Baron steal of the game. But BLG just can't get it done in that team fight. They're... BLG had no business being in this game at any point, but somehow they make it one of the most competitive, exciting back and forth matches that we've had and just went toe to toe with the absolute titan that was JDG, which makes you feel for even more excited for BLG in 2024 because they finally get to get some wins, some titles under their belt after they were so good in 2023, but just ran in time and time again to the wall that was JD Gaming. Absolutely unstoppable in that golden road and became one of the best rivalries that the LPL has had in years, even though JDG were winning time and time again. That was obviously high stakes, but not enough to be number one on this list because when you have a championship on the line no higher stakes than that in an elimination or match point type of game rng again on this list capturing their first msi title back in 2018 against king zone dragon x and historically now you probably forget that there were about 45 minutes of pauses in this game but number one thing to talk about in this set was pick ban. We've got a Velkaz and an Illawi for King Zone who got down early but kind of sneak a Baron and then find the optimal team fight as Gorilla gets like a five man charm on the Recon. They blow up RNG and King Zone down 2 1 at this point. Look ready to force Silver Scrapes and a game five against the iconic Kaisa pick for Uzi, the ardent sensor meta. He's got his buddy Bing, Bing his buddy Ming on the Janna in this one, and somehow there's a miracle 
Karsa tries to flash engage and gets blown up immediately. He doesn't even do anything, but somehow Uzi's able to do enough damage, even though Zhao Hu also gets blown up. Let me as the front line. He dashes in, smacks some people. Let me gets the double knockup. We're going to forgive Uzi for auto attacking uh, Baron and kind of getting himself killed. But that prolongs everything for RNG. They're still at a deficit until the miracle, impressive. Flash ulti for Malzahar, that doesn't sound impressive, but remember when you listen to the comms on this play, they know that Praise QSS is a mere, what, three seconds from coming off of cooldown. RNG calls it, everybody pulls the trigger, flash in for Zhao Hu, Kaisa follows up with the ulti. That split second decision making was why RNG was the best team in the world across 2018, why they were huge favorites heading into that world championship and why they captured that elusive first MSI title for the organization, first international title for Uzi. They were a well-oiled machine across that entire series, but I feel like people would remember that game four matchup even more memorably if there weren't so many pauses. And that team fight that is around the Baron pit with Uzi dancing around, it's like 30 seconds after a 30 plus minute pause that we had. So the mental fortitude that it would take for all those players to be playing such an incredibly high stakes match with all these pauses coming in and the fact that they were both, both squads still playing at such an incredibly high level, absolutely deserving of being number one on this list. And even if you were to include some of the best series of all time at MSI, I know already, already I know I already talked about SKT G2 2019. I think King Zone RNG, you could absolutely be putting in that category for some of the best series that we've had in the history of the Midseason Invitational. 2018 remains the best individual performance, start to finish, that any player has ever had. And it was Uzi throughout that event. I know he was getting spoon fed CS, but he was still up like a hundred farm in a lot of these matchups against guys even like Prey. And I know. An Orn, a Janna, Skarner, Malzahar type of comp. Everything is being funneled into that Kaisa. But time and time again, Uzi delivered for his RNG brethren and was an absolute icon. Everybody was happy for him to capture that first title over there at MSI. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric. Thank you to all you lovely individuals across the globe for joining us as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.